I didn't know. Of course you did. What, you're expecting me to believe you didn't know what you were going to say before you were handed the speech and stepped up to the podium? You're the spokesperson, for God's sake. Of course you knew. No one could stand up there with that much composure if they were reading it for the first time. Don't insult my intelligence by lying to my face. It's pathetic. I thought that if I told you, then you'd try to interfere. Of course I would have. Anyone would have. Do you realise what you've said? The implications, the fucking... Fuck. The fallout from this will be magnanimous. And I think, had you thought about that for one second, and not about your own career path, or whatever you lot call it, you wouldn't have said it. I would have lost my job. We're all going to lose our job. I don't think you realise that. You, as his spokesperson, have said you agree with the new legislation, which, need I remind you, has ties to Iran and Russia. Do you know what that means? That means World War Three, Priscilla. It was a statement, Tasman, not a declaration of war. And how do you think declarations of war start? with a match. And you stood in front of an entire nation and lit that match right in front of them, threw it at their feet and watched it burn. Henry was doing my head in this morning. I was once sick and I lost my voice and I gave her the spoon I'd used to eat my soup in the hope that she'd catch it and lose her voice and I wouldn't have to hear her whining anymore. Christ. Should have taken that one to the grave, shouldn't I? I wouldn't say that out loud. Come off it. As if you haven't thought of doing horrible things to your kids from time to time. Can't say I have. <sighs> You're not religious, are you? No. Why? It's just, in my experience, only religious mothers seem horrified by my oversharing about my kids. No, not religious. Just love my kids is all. I never said I didn't love them. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. That weird, judgmental, half... Mm-hmm. Half whinge, half nasal exhalation thing. Third, mm-mm, third whinge, third weird exhalation. Actually, fuck's sake, Bella, you're the most boring person ever. If you're going to insult me, at least get the fractions right. Well, fraction this. And Henry's not invited to Jemima's birthday party anymore because he farts too much. Maybe you should take him off that stupid vegan diet where all you feed him is fucking beans, you coward. What do you want? Keep walking! I thought I'd find you in here. Amelia, I had no choice. Nor do you have one now. So you heard? Hard not to. Everybody cheering, toasting, celebrating. It was ghastly. But it will be the last time. No, it won't. But this will. What do you mean? I've waited for you, foolishly, for what seems like my entire life, thinking that at some point you'd just say no to leaving, that you'd just stay. But you love it. You love your work. You love the thrill of it, of being part of something bigger than this, bigger than where you came from. That's why you always come back, isn't it? To remind you of your worth, of where you started and where you are. I don't need grand gestures and welcome back parties with champagne and caviar. People patting me on the back saying, well done, good for you. Toasting my arrival and imminent departure to realize my worth. I'm worth more than this, than someone who waits for a man to finally see them. I do see you. You know me. You don't see me. I can't keep hoping that you will anymore. And cut. Pretty good. Pretty darn good.